She was sitting in a church service on Mother's Day, and uh, she thought about her father. And she was enjoying the message on Mother's Day, but she, she was thinking about her father. And uh, she had an interesting background because her father was a Civil War veteran. 
Her mother had died early in her life, so for all the years of her life, basically she had been raised, and her siblings had been raised by her father. Her father was a very devout and godly man. And as she was thinking about that on Mother's Day, listening to the Mother's Day sermon, she thought, wow, it would really be neat if we could honor fathers. And she wanted to honor her father. Her father's birthday was in the month of June. And so it was decided that in her church, on the third Sunday of June, the pastor would honor all the fathers. That year was 1910. Fast forward 56 years. 1966, President Lyndon Johnson signed the proclamation declaring that the third Sunday in June would be set aside as Father's Day, a day when we would recognize and honor and pay tribute to our earthly fathers. And as uh, we look across this auditorium this morning, everyone is here, every one of us here had a father, right? We all have fathers. And I realize today, uh, some of you were raised by a godly father, a wonderful father, and there are some probably that could have been raised, maybe raised, by a father that did not have a relationship with the Lord. Maybe you look back on your childhood and you say, I wish my father had been a Christian. I wished I had been raised in a Christian home. The other thing that really blesses my heart this morning I'm looking around, and I see fathers with their children. Right here on this side of the auditorium, I look around and I see fathers here with their children. I look over here and I see fathers here with their children. And that is a wonderful, wonderful sight that blesses your pastor's heart. To know that in our auditorium today, fathers have gathered with their children. There's really something very, very special about a dad and his children when they are in church together. I heard about a little boy. I love stories. I heard about a little boy that was sitting with his dad in church. And the offering plate was being passed. And the little boy spoke up and he said, Don't pay for me, Dad. I'm only five years old. Isn't that cute? I love that story. Then I heard a story about a little gal. And as she walked out of church one Sunday morning, she said to her pastor, she said, Pastor, when I grow up, I'm going to give you some money. Now, the pastor had never heard anything quite like that. And he said, well, well, sweetheart, he said, why are you going to give me money? And she, she said, my dad says that you're the poorest preacher we've ever had. <laughs> Oh, well, let me just share one more. I think of one of the sweetest things I've ever heard was one day in school, the teacher said to the little boy in class, what's the nicest thing that your daddy has ever done for you? And without a moment's hesitation, the little boy replied, he married my mother. And that is so really, really special. It's a wonderful thing to be able to gather together and to honor our fathers today. Many of you are like me. Your fathers are in glory, amen? We look back and we remember our dads and we know that today, praise God, they're absent from the body and they are present with the Lord. And we all understand in our society that it's important for boys and girls to have a mother. It's also important for boys and girls to have a father. And when I say that, I, I realize that in our church family, we do have some wonderful, wonderful single mothers today who, for a variety of circumstances and reasons, are trying to provide what is needed as a mother for their children, and also supplementing as best you can for a father. And I salute you today, single moms that are doing that, trying to be a mom and trying to be a dad to your children. 
But I think all of us would agree that the normal, natural thing is every boy and girl should have a mother and should have a father in the home. Now there's one really, really neat thing in the Word of God. When you study the Word of God, you discover that the Bible has a lot to say about fathers in the Bible. Let me just illustrate. We think about Abraham, who was the father of the Hebrew race, and also referred to as the father of faith. And then we think about David. David was a great king. But we would quickly add, David was not a very good father. Great king, but not a good father. Then we think about Joseph, who was the legal father of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all we seem to gather and glean about Joseph was that, that he seemed to be a rather strong, silent, kind of man. Then we also think this morning about the prodigal's father. Isn't that a beautiful story? We think of the prodigal son who had strayed from home, had, had, had literally wasted everything that his father had given him. And the Bible tells us he came to his senses and he said, I will arise and go to my father. And we love to read that story because it pitches to us the wonderful love of our heavenly father. Let me just share with you this morning, dads, that the first impression your children get of God is what they learn from you as their father. And this morning, we do want to talk about fathers. And I have chosen what may, what may be a very, very, very unusual father. All of us know about Methuselah. What a character in the Bible. Think about it. He is known as the oldest man that ever lived. Scripture tells us he lived 969 years. Just think about that this morning. Can you even think about a person living 969 years? Can you even imagine how many sandals he wore out in 969 years? Can you even imagine how many garments of clothing he wore out in 969 years? Can you even imagine how many Chick-fil-A sandwiches he ate in 969 years? Say, Pastor, they didn't have Chick-fil-A sandwiches. Well, that's my favorite restaurant, you know, fast food restaurant. But so I had to throw that in. How many, how many, how many sandwiches? How, how many, how much food did he eat in 969 years? Methuselah is a very unusual man. His father is more familiar to us because we know that his father's name was Enoch. We know that Enoch, the Bible tells us, was a man who walked with God. Let me just share with you this passage of Scripture from Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. Notice the passage with me as I read it. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he fathered Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he got Methuselah 300 years. Thus all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, why? For God took him. When Methuselah had lived 187 years, he fathered Laman. Methuselah lived after he fathered Laman 782 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. Now, there's something in this passage that I really want you to see this morning. I've preached from this passage before, 
And I, I'm really not sure I picked up on it. But what I really want you to see this morning is this verse, verse 22. And Enoch walked with God. What's the next word? After. That sort of means he probably didn't walk with God before. Are you following me? But he walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years. I ask you a question this morning. Have you ever noticed that before? 65 years old, he begot Methuselah, and then he walked with God for 300 years. It is specifically said in this passage in Scripture that he began to walk with God after he became a father. You and I know that parenthood changes us. <laughs> I'm looking around this morning and I remember when some of these children were born. I'm old enough to look around and remember I married some of these Parents that have these children. And uh, some couples have got married and they've drifted away from the church and then they have their first child and then they come back to church. And I've heard this on several occasions. I've heard them say, Pastor, we, we haven't been in church like we should have, but we have a baby now. And since we have a baby, we just decided it was time to come back to church. And you know what I say? Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen? They've decided to come back to church. May God bless all of our wonderful moms and dads for doing that. It changes things when you become a parent. I remember when my first child was born. His name is David. David was born in 1967. I, I can't believe it, but he'll be 53 years old next month. And when David was born, I wanted to be the very best father I could be. And dads, probably you felt the very same way when that first child was born. Do you remember what it was like? You, you, you came home from the hospital. Nowadays, parents have to know how to put the car seat in the car to get the baby home from the hospital. I won't name any names there. But we bring the child home from the hospital, and we are so careful with that tiny, precious little baby. You don't even want to breathe on that little baby. And the baby, you're afraid something's going to happen. The baby's going to crack. Something's going to go wrong. You wouldn't dare come to church and put your baby in the church nursery because those nursery workers would not know how to take care of your baby. But then when the fourth baby comes along, you take your baby to the nursery and you say, Catch! <laughs> I'm sure when your first child was born, you cried out, Oh God, make me the father I ought to be. Make me the daddy that my son needs. Make me the daddy that my daughter needs. It seems to have been this kind of a circumstance that caused Enoch to change when his son was born. Doesn't tell us that he walked with God the first 65 years of his life. But then it tells us Methuselah was born. And then the Bible says that after that he began to walk with God for the next 300 years of his life before he died. So I want to take that and help 
and encourage our fathers today. So here's point one. Dads, be sure you are on the right path. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God. That, mean that, that means that Enoch got on the right path. It was a difficult day, an Enoch's day. It is a difficult day today. But dads, it is your responsibility to make sure you are on the right path. And so, as I begin that thought, let me just ask you a question, dads. Are you on the right path this morning? Are you on the path this morning that will lead you to heaven? Where are you leading your sons and your daughters? One of the great pastors in America today is Pastor Jerry Vines. Uh, he pastored for 25 years, or nearly 25 years, the great First Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, he's retired now. He's still involved in ministry. He's been preaching for over 60 years. And he tells a story in his first church in Georgia. He had a, a gentleman by the name of, of Willie Lee. He says that Willie Lee was a deacon in his church. And uh, Dr. Vines would tell the story. He would say, we used to have testimony meetings in our church from time to time. And people would just share their testimonies. And they would share with everybody how they came to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And he said, we were in a testimony meeting, and Brother Willie Lee would love to talk about how his son led him to the Lord. Now, that may sound strange to say that his son led him to the Lord. But he said, one afternoon, he was in his backyard, and he noticed that his little son was following him wherever he went. And the little son was trying to take those big steps to keep up with his daddy. And he said that he looked at his son that was following him step by step by step. And God spoke to his heart because he wasn't saved. And he said when he saw his son trying to follow him, Roy said that that little boy who was following in his steps was the cause of why he came to receive Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. That little son following in his dad's steps brought conviction in Willie Lee's heart. And he came to know Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Dads, can I just remind you as kindly as I can this morning and as lovingly as I can this morning, the Bible says that you are to be the spiritual leader in your home. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Dan didn't say it. The Bible says that. And when you talk to pastors, they will tell you a truth that is so prominent. And the truth is this. If you have a family that is unreached, a family that does not come to church, and a family that maybe somebody invites to church, and they come, and then as a pastor you go to that home, and you try to reach that family for the Lord, if you can reach the dad, if the dad comes to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, you know what usually happens? The dad leads the mother and the children to come to a point of salvation in their lives too. So dads, I'm just challenging, them, challenging you this morning. You set the spiritual direction for your family. And I'm challenging you. Let Jesus Christ be the very center of your life. Men have a tendency to make so many things the center of their lives. Some men make work the center of their life. Now work is vitally important. I remember this statement I read by Peter Lynch. It's a powerful statement. No man on his deathbed ever regretted that he did not spend enough time in his office. That's a powerful statement. That's a powerful statement. Work is important, but it's not the main thing. For many men, sports. Some guys just went, oh no, Pastor, don't go there. Sports becomes the center 
of their lives. I heard about a guy that when football season was starting, he went over to the television set, he looked at the television set, and then he looked at his wife and he said to his wife, do you have anything to say before the season starts? Wow. What was the center of his life? Football. Now guys, let's be honest with one another today. All of us can identify with that. Sports are wonderful, but don't let your work, don't let sports, don't let other things be the center of your life. Let the Lord Jesus Christ be the center of your life. Here's an interesting verse. Paul writes, For to me, to live is Christ, and to what? Die is gain. I'm, I'm going to help you out this morning. It's going to be hard on you, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to be hard on you because I love you. Be honest this morning. What would you say right here? For to me, to live is, what would you put in the blank, Dad? What would you put in that blank this morning? You see, if you put anything in that blank besides the Lord, you can't say it to die is gain. Amen? You can't do it. If you put anything else there instead of Christ, you have a problem. Let me just encourage you this morning, dads. Have you ever thought about it? When you brought a baby into this world, you brought a piece of eternity into this world. Think about that this morning. You say, Pastor, I've never thought about that. You had everything to do with their being here, and you will have a great deal to do with where they go when they leave here. And to be helpful this morning, I want you to know that your children have heart problems. Every one of your children, your sons and your daughters, they have a heart problem. The Bible says that all of those precious little boys and girls are born with a sinful nature. Where did they get that sinful nature? They got it from you. All of us are born with that fallen, sinful nature. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because of that, all of us need to repent of our sins. All of us need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And dads, probably the greatest privilege you can ever have in your life is to lead your son or your daughter to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's something I'm going to propose to you. Do you realize this morning that there was never a time in the life of Methuselah that he did not know that his dad was walking with God? Are you following me? There was never a time in his life that he did not understand that his dad was walking with God. And dads, this morning, that's an awesome challenge for each one of you. Make sure in your lives that there was never a time in your lives that, you, that your children do not know that you're walk, not walking with God. Make sure to make that a priority. So here's the second thing. Be sure you're on the right path. Now secondly, be sure you are going at the right pace. If you're walking with God, if you're on the right path, then you need to make sure you're going at the right pace. It means to make sure you're walking at the pace that God is going. The Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? If you're going to go at the right pace, it means that you're living the way that God wants you to live. 
If you're going to go at the right pace, it means that you're on the journey. You're walking with God and you're walking the way God wants you to walk. If you're going to walk at the right pace, it means that your children are going to begin to walk with you down the path of life at the right pace. I want to give you something very practical this morning. Dad, you need to realize that God has given you a teaching responsibility in the home. You need to teach them. You need to get them on the right path. You need to get them going at the right pace. And you need to make sure they're going in the right direction. You have a teaching responsibility as a pastor. Excuse me, as a father. There is more to being a father than just to contribute a single sperm cell. You have a responsibility to lead your children to walk with the Lord. Now, here's something very interesting. In the early years, your children may not appreciate it. Have you ever noticed that? They may not appreciate it. I like what somebody wrote. When I was four years old, I thought my daddy could do anything. When I was five, I thought my dad sure knows a lot. <laughs> when I was six, I said, my dad is smarter than your dad. When I was eight, I said, my dad doesn't know exactly everything. When I was 10, I said, in olden days, when my dad grew up, things were really different. When I was 12, I said, oh, well, naturally, dad doesn't know anything about that. He's too old. When I was 14, I said, uh, don't pay any attention to my dad. He's too old-fashioned. When I was 21, I said, dad, he's out of date. When I was 25, I said, dad knows a lot about it, but he should. He's been around a long time. When I was 30, I said, maybe we should ask dad what he thinks. After all, Dad's had a lot of experience. When I was 40, I said, I wonder how Dad would have handled it. He was so wise. When I was 50, I said, I would give anything if Dad were here now so I could talk it over with him. Too bad I didn't appreciate how smart he was. I could have learned a lot from him. Dad, your children are going to learn a lot from you. You have a teaching responsibility. Here's what the Bible says. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Teach your children. Get them on the right path. Get them going at the right pace. Here's something I read not too long ago, and it's very surprising. I, I, I just can't even imagine it's true. We are told that the average father spends two to four minutes a day with their children. Two to four minutes a day with their children. That, that's, that, that just sounds too unbelievable. But that's something that I recently read. And so, I want to encourage you to make sure and spend time with your children. Many people here this morning will remember the name of Jim Baker from PTL fame. Remember, he went to prison. And his son, Jamie Charles, had a very hard time. His son, Jamie Charles, got into drugs, lived a rebellious lifestyle. And after Jim Baker went to prison, his boy went to the prison and spent a day with his dad. From time to time, they would have an opportunity in that particular prison that Jim Baker was in that, that a son or a daughter could come and spend a day with their parent. At the end of the day, here's what Jamie Charles said to his dad. He said, Dad, this has been the best day of my life. I spent my whole life trying to get your attention. I wanted to just spend one day with you and have you to myself. There is a powerful message here if we'll listen. Children want the attention of their fathers. They crave 
your attention. Enoch walked with God. Enoch got on the right path. Enoch walked at the right pace. And thirdly, be sure you're going to the right place. We find that the Bible says that he walked with God. And then that interesting verse, and he was not for God took him. Think about that. It means he went right into glory. He, he went to heaven without dying. Here's a man that never died. Could I ask you to do something this morning? Could I ask you to imagine for a moment that you're going to a funeral? Pastors do a lot of funerals. I did a funeral just two weeks ago yesterday. Imagine for a moment you're going to a funeral. Now, here's what I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine that it's your funeral. I said, whoa, I've never thought about that before. In your imagination this morning, as you're going to your funeral, what are your friends? What are your acquaintances? What are your neighbors? Dad, what is your wife? What are your children? going to say about you. You say, what, Pastor? I've never thought about that before. The Bible tells us it's appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. Unless the rapture happens, we're all going to die. Said, Boy, Pastor, I didn't need to hear that this morning. We're all going to die. Imagine your own funeral. What are your family, your friends going to say? Your neighbor's going to say. Your co-worker's going to say. What's your wife going to say? What's your kids going to say? About you. I, I really believe that that's something we need to think about. Because fathers, you are leading your children somewhere. And you need to understand that. Enoch walked with God and he was not. God took him. Methuselah, his son, lived for another nine, lived for 969 years. But we're leading our children someplace. A, a, a little boy came home from church on a Sunday morning. As some dads do, dad had stayed home to watch TV. He wanted to mess around in the garage a little bit. He had a couple things he wanted to do in the yard. And so dad didn't go to church. The little boy came home and dad was sitting in his recliner in front of the TV. And, and the little boy jumped up in his dad's lap. Dad hugged him. And then the little boy looked at his dad and said, Dad, guess what the Sunday school teacher asked me this morning? And the dad just sort of flipped it off a little bit. He didn't even take his eyes off the TV. He said, well, what did the teacher ask you? And, and the little boy said, the teacher asked me, when we died, where did we want to go? Now that got the dad's attention. All of a sudden, he looked at his son, took his eyes off the TV, and he looked at his son. And he said to his son, well, what did you tell your teacher? At this time, the little boy is face to face with his daddy. And the little boy reaches up and takes his little hands and put them, his hands on his daddy's cheeks. And almost eyeball to eyeball looking at his daddy, he whispers to his daddy, I told my teacher when I die, I want to go where my daddy goes. And that's what God used to bring that daddy to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That daddy realized he wasn't living right before his son. And God used it to change his heart and have a desire 
to live for the Lord, and he trusted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Daddy, when your children die, where are they going? Where have you led them? You need to understand it's serious. You have the responsibility to lead your children to the Lord. Would you bow with me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity this morning. We thank you for the great hymns we've been able to sing. We thank you for the special music. We thank you, Father, for your word. We're so thankful for Enoch and the lessons that we've learned from him that we need to be walking the right path. We need to be walking at the right pace. And we need to be walking to the right place. And Father, perhaps there's a daddy here this morning. Maybe there's a mommy here this morning. And they know. They, they, they know that they didn't intend for it to happen, but somehow, some way, they've got detoured. And they're not walking the path that they should be walking. And Father, I pray this morning, right now, that the Holy Spirit of God would bring conviction to their heart and to their life. Father, I pray that right now, in the quietness of this moment, they would confess to you how they know that they have got off the right path. I pray, Father, they would repent and determine today, with your help, to get back on the right path at the right pace and go to the right place and lead their children as well. Father, we know this is serious. Father, I simply ask and pray this morning that you would speak to our hearts. May there be without a, any shadow of doubt a wonderful assurance in our hearts and in our lives today that we're going to live our lives to please you for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I just simply want to share with you if you're here this morning and God the Holy Spirit has spoke to your heart, we're not singing an invitation to Him. We're not inviting folks to come forward. But maybe, maybe you just need to talk to your pastor today. Talk to me when you leave. Say, Pastor, could I, could I talk to you? Or, or could I set up an appointment and come in and talk to you? This is serious business, dads. Don't just leave today if you know that you've messed up. You can confess it to the Lord, but maybe you need some help. Maybe you need some direction. Maybe you need some counsel on how to get on the right path and stay on the right path. And it's for His honor and for His glory. Here's what I want you to do. Would you please stand with me this morning? And uh, we're trying to follow the CDC guidelines. And they have told us that what we need to do is at the end of our worship services, we need to exit from the rear of the auditorium and we need to go directly outside of the auditorium and the building. And then they have told us we can have a wonderful time of fellowship in the parking lot. And you can, you can stay as long as you want. Just have a wonderful, wonderful time of fellowship together. God bless you. You're dismissed. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.